Welcome to another solo video adventure with Chloe. P.S. This is actually my second solo video, as my very first solo adventure was when I stayed in a tiny teeny capsule hotel at the airport by myself. You should totally watch that next. Today, I'm officially ticking off one of my absolute top bucket list experiences. And that, my friends, is flying business class. This is my very first time flying fancy, and I'm going to take you with me every step of the journey. When you last saw us, we were finishing up our two-week cruise across the Atlantic Ocean. After visiting Greenland, Iceland and Norway, we disembarked in Boston, hung out for a couple of days before saying our tearful goodbyes one last time. Long story short, Ludwig and I are making the move to Canada, but Ludwig had to go first for work while I tied up a few loose ends in New Zealand, such as running my very first marathon with my brother. In fact, this is my brother here. His name's Bram. He kindly offered to drive me to the airport today. <laughs> Compulsory going to the airport coffee run. Cheers. phone. <laughs> so you may be assuming that I'm heading from New Zealand to Canada, right? Well, yes, that would have been the most simple and time efficient option. However, I decided if I was going to fly business class, I wanted to squeeze every bit of enjoyment possible out of this adventure. And after a bit of research, I noticed that flying from Auckland to Vancouver one way in business class was roughly about the same price as flying Auckland to London one way, but with about double the time on the plane. Now I am completely aware that that is going in the opposite direction, but hey, I am a weirdo. Plus, I have friends in the UK that I was dying to catch up with after the pandemic, so I use that as a little bit of an excuse. Today I'm making the trip from Auckland to San Francisco, San Francisco to London, and then I'll eventually make my way to Canada from there. Too excited, I cannot contain myself. Well guys, I had officially stepped foot in my first business class lounge. This is the Air New Zealand lounge at Auckland International Airport. Now without any lounge experience whatsoever, I wasn't really sure what to expect, but I was amazed at how nice this lounge was. It was absolutely massive, so so clean, spacious, didn't feel too crowded, and the purple lighting was ultra cool. Did I just say ultra? I arrived at around 12 p.m. and there were a ton of healthy options for lunch, as well as many desserts, loads of different beer and wine, I could order from about 10 different cocktails for free, 
and I could order any coffee I wanted from these nifty little iPads for free. I also noticed they had showers here, but I did recently have a shower and I didn't feel like it was time for another. <laughs> glorious in here. Look at these crazy big purple doors. <sighs> All right, I think it's cocktail time. No expert on this topic. I've just started to delve into the whole points and miles world myself, but I did use points to get a cheaper deal for this business class flight. So stick around until the end of the video and I'll explain how I booked this, how much it cost, and some other quirky little benefits that happened along the way. the seat tour. There was ample bag and foot space, multiple crevices to put things in, a wonderful selection of reading material, some plush bedding, including a cozy looking blankie, a squishy pillow, another cozy looking blankie, which, spoiler alert, gave me many electric shocks later on, and yet another squishy pillow. There was a handy cupboard concealing a sneaky bottle of water and my fancy noise cancelling headphones. Hello! Next to that is of course the standard remote and power outlets, a little coat hanger, a nifty reading light, uh, I am not quite sure what this was. You might come back to this later. I had an amenity kit that looked like a little mini suitcase. We'll delve into that later. I was also surprised to see a menu waiting for me, so of course I had a little gander at this. And then I made use of my sanitizer wipe that I was given and gave everything a really good clean before making myself comfortable. Also, for a moment I got excited that I was literally steps away from the lavatory, which was great news as I planned to drink multiple coffees and alcoholic beverages. However, upon further inspection I realized it was actually just a cupboard. This seat is so spacious. Definitely wasn't expecting this much space to myself. It's like a little capsule. You please make sure your seatbelts are securely fastened and flight attendants please ensure exit row verification is complete. Few 
moments we'll be showing you a safety video demonstration. Okay guys, we're officially about to take off. My first business class flight is about to commence. That's right. I'm the most excited person on this whole plane. to not only vlogging, but in particular, plane vlogging, I honestly didn't know how the heck my sound would turn out. I've watched a bunch of these flight videos myself and I've noticed they're all wearing what seems to be like a little Bluetooth mic. I honestly couldn't bring myself to buy more vlogging gear yet until we have really got this business underway. So I hoped for the best. Turned out the sound was So you'll be delighted to know that you'll have this very professional voiceover Chloe to listen to for the majority of this video. My first flight from Auckland to San Francisco is a hefty 12 hours, followed by a 6 hour layover in San Francisco, which is one of the reasons I actually booked this flight in particular as I wanted to spend as much time in a lounge as possible. Followed by my second flight from San Francisco to Heathrow, which is another 10-ish hours, so I wasted no time in perusing through my entertainment for the next 12 hours. Briefly considering a Harry Potter marathon, however, I've done that probably one too many times. So I settled on a good old space movie. Who else loves these? Because I do. Next up came my tablecloth, which is definitely a first for me on a plane. How exciting! After taking off, I was promptly served with a very hot pottle of roasted nuts, closely followed by a drink request. I went for a classic black coffee because it was indeed my plan to stay awake for as long as humanly possible over the next 28 hours, and that too was very, very hot. Before we even left the ground, I had been asked for my menu preference, and within about 45 minutes after takeoff, I was served with my very first meal of the flight, which was technically lunch, I think. I opt for the seared orange roughy fish fillet, topped with a fancy tomato nidujajash sauce? Ugh, this sauce. Grilled green beans, barbecue tomatoes, roasted macadamia nuts, and fried capers. My sides for this meal were a mescaline salad mix with fennel, orange, and cherry tomatoes, and coronation salmon with butter lettuce, cilantro, and seasoning. Of course, this was all tied together with a delicious wholemeal roll with butter, and it was warm. Now, I am no wine connoisseur, but I believe I chose a French white wine, and it was delightful. This meal was really tasty and well cooked, however, I didn't find it super duper amazing. It was, of course, a huge step above the food I'm used to over an economy. And the whole experience was just fun. From the tablecloth, to the real plates and cutlery, to having so much space that when you cut your food, you're not grazing elbows with the person next to you. To experience this just once was awesome, and I appreciated every second of it. Plus, how cute are these mini salt and pepper shakers? To top off the meal, dessert was a plum and almond tart. Now I have to admit, I'm not much of a sweets person. This was nice, but Ludwig would have definitely liked this more than I did. I probably should have ordered the assorted cheese plate instead. closer inspection of my goodies, I noticed that my blankets and pillows said Sex Fifth Avenue. I honestly don't know anything about fashion or brands, and after a little Google, I found out it was indeed a very luxurious brand. And take a look at my pajamas. I've seen people on YouTube change into these business class pajamas before, and now it's my turn to wear business class pajamas on the plane. I have made it in life, guys. Made it in life. P.S. I figured out what this strange little object was. It's actually a lamp controlled by this little lamp button over here. It's time to look at the amenity kit. I don't know if you can hear me in here, but I'm talking to you anyway. All 
Alrighty, onto this snazzy suitcase looking amenity kit. Concealed inside were some tissues, a pen, a sleeping mask, earplugs, a toothbrush with the cutest little toothpaste, an in-flight remedy kit, some long socks with grippy things on the bottom, and that's all. After all of that liquid consumption, it was definitely time to go and use the lavatory. Don't worry, I won't share too much detail in this little section, but I was intrigued to see if there was anything special about the business class toilets, aside from the fact that we were up in business class and had our own special toilet section. They looked pretty much the same to me. There were a few fancy looking lotions and sprays, but to be honest, I can't remember if we have these kinds of things back in economy as well. my super snuggly outfit I decided it was time to test out the chair bed situation. With so many different buttons I wasn't really sure what would take me where. It took me a while to figure out how to get into the lie flat situation. There was also different buttons that took your legs out into a leg rest, different buttons that took your back down into a decline, there was all sorts going on. Eventually settling into a comfortable, almost upright position, I spent about an hour or two editing one of our YouTube videos. While in Denmark, it's our uh, Danish food tour video, which is another one you should totally watch next, guys. Here it is. Watch it after this. After a little bit of business, it was time to make use of my in-flight amenity kit. Inside, I found a facial cleansing cloth that smelled amazing, some face cream, some hand cream, and an aeroplane lip balm. hours pass by as I sweat profusely while I watch that guy free climb that wall and attempt to have a quick nap. half an hour and I decided I was far too tired to sleep and ordered something from the mid-flight snack menu. Shortly after ordering I was delivered with a cute little half grilled cheese sandwich and a bowl of piping hot creamy tomato soup. My flight attendant was also really nice and he threw in a sneaky chocolate fudge brownie. This meal, although simple, was absolutely delicious and exactly what I felt like for a midnight snack. With a nice full tummy, I was definitely more in the mood for some sleep. So I pushed my excitement aside and tried a second attempt at a nap. It was a success. As I ordered a post-nap black coffee, I checked my watch and to my surprise I got a solid three and a half hours of sleep. I was feeling kind of refreshed, in need of more sleep, but definitely eager to stay awake and make the most of my last few hours on this flight. To my surprise I opted not to get the breakfast meal on offer as I was actually still full from my grilled cheese and soup. Also, with the six whole hours that I'm about to have in the business class lounge, I was semi saving my appetite for all of the goodies to come. My flight attendant was definitely concerned when I said no breakfast. And he suggested did I want maybe avocado toast? After saying no I'm fine with just a black coffee, he came back a second time about 10 minutes later asking if I would like perhaps another cheese toasty. How gorgeous. I love how persistent he was and how nothing was too much ask. It was amazing service. I believe his name was Brian. 
the verdict on flight number one. This was a crazy amount of space. If you're used to business class, then this may just seem really normal for you, but coming from economy, and more recently, premium economy, I seriously never got used to having this much space to myself. I am actually really glad that I chose the front seat. Although it was close to the toilets and the flight attendant kitchen zone, I definitely felt like I had more room than the other seats. They all seemed to be more on a diagonal, while mine was facing straight forward. literally just over an hour since we landed and I've just noticed on the sign United Polaris Lounge so that's me the next six hours in a lounge yes that's more time than I ever thought I'd get all right no time to waste let's go and make the most of this lounge into this first little section where there's like little private office seats like work zones and I'm pretty sure there's a lot more to see there was an escalator going upstairs and I feel like there's gonna be some stuff up there plus shower suites I am absolutely gonna make the most of a shower room and I just went in and asked the lady what's a wellness room can I book it she said it's for babies or people with babies but I saw the little picture outside I couldn't decide whether it was a baby or someone in like a yoga pose but it's not for me baby also I just asked about the showers she said I can basically come in anytime I don't need a book so I thought I'd go and get some breakfast, some coffee, make the most of the food in this lounge, go back and have a shower, and then I have enough time to go and get some more food before the flight. I think that's a good plan. Well, what can I say? The United Polaris Lounge, San Francisco? Absolutely massive. This lounge life is a completely different airport experience and has opened my eyes to a whole new world. I can't believe that some people travel like this every time they fly. I'm addicted. This lounge was really quiet when I first got here in the morning, but definitely became a little bit busier as the morning went on. I noticed it was pretty crowded around the food and bar section, but it still felt very spacious as there was plenty of empty locations throughout the whole lounge. There were some little work desk booths, a full bar with any cocktail you could wish for, a full buffet that swapped from breakfast foods onto lunch during my stay, tons of coffee and tea stations, private offices, a candy section, which I was pretty upset Ludwig wasn't here to see, and a sit-down restaurant. I actually opted for the sit-down restaurant as I quite prefer this style over the buffet. There was a bit of a wait here, of course. The lady mentioned it might be about 20 to 30 minutes, so she gave me one of those little buzzer things. I went and got a coffee and waited for my buzzer. minutes later, I was all ready to go. 
Of course, I ordered an everything bagel with cream cheese and a veggie omelette with hash browns, which uh, I forgot in America is just basically little tiny chopped up potatoes. I was momentarily tempted to order this, but I didn't want to get too full now. I was also happy to find that the teeny tiny salt and peppers were also here. Following breakfast, I was very excited for my first ever airport shower experience. Honestly, nothing beats the idea of having a shower while in transit between two long haul flights. These shower suites were massive. There seemed to be quite a few there and there was an extensive cleaning process between each person who uses it. So that was great to see. They had everything I could need in here, including body wash, shampoo, conditioner, body lotion, soaps. They also had a bunch of extra things that you could order out at the front desk on this list here. It's shower time at the airport. That was absolutely phenomenal. I don't know how I'm ever going to go through the airport without having a shower now. I'm ruined. Anytime I'm in transit, I always try to take the stairs and get as many steps in as possible. Post airport shower, I decided I may as well try to get some editing done. I set myself up with this cute little nook and going for a yet another coffee. Surprise, surprise. However, this time I opted for a barista made one. I was a little skeptical. Usually I'm a bit of a coffee snob because in New Zealand, I swear, we have the best coffees I've ever tasted. And unfortunately, I was disappointed in my soy latte. It was very watery. It was no good. So I quickly ditched this and swapped it out for an Americano. This is always my backup if a quality soy latte isn't available. No idea what it is, but it's got blueberries in it. Hmm. It's pretty big. Basically a professional now as I walk in feeling cool, calm and collected until I spot where I'm sitting, I remember where I am and I lose all coolness once again. I truly feel like this will never get any less exciting. Alright, business class round two. I'm on a slightly diagonal seat this time. Very left space. Still very, very nice. Plus. They have salmon bagel in the morning. This time, I went for the very back. When booking, I thought it might be interesting to choose two different parts of the business class section. First flight, I was in 9A at the very front, and this flight, I've booked 8A, which was at the back of the row, in one of those diagonal seats I mentioned earlier. So, this seat and all of the amenities seemed much the same as my previous flight. The only difference was now I was in a diagonal seat, which meant my overall space definitely felt smaller and some of the things were just in different locations. I was given the exact same blankets, pillows and suitcase amenity kit. However, I did notice on this flight that they didn't offer us pajamas. It was only a 10 hour flight, so maybe there's a certain pajama cutoff. Get sparkling wine or water before we start off. Oh, sparkling wine, please. Sparkling wine. Sparkling wine. Okay. I can get used to this.
handed my before takeoff champagne, I waste no time in picking my first lot of entertainment. I don't know why, but it seems to have become a real habit for me to watch an extreme sports adventure documentary while on a flight. I do this every time guaranteed. Please fasten your seatbelts. Shortly after takeoff, I was served with my very first meal. Again, an appetizer of hot nuts. I must say, these were so much yummier than the previous nuts. Those tasted kind of chewy and a little stale, and these ones tasted crunchy and fresh. So of course, I downed the whole lot with a wine, this time going for an Italian red. I chose the vegetarian meal on offer, which was a spaghetti squash noodle dish with herb ratatouille sauce, shaved parmesan, zucchini slices, potato crisp, and pumpkin seeds. I didn't realize that the potato crisp literally meant potato crisps, but I wasn't complaining. Hand me chips any day. I've never really seen them in a meal like this though, but it seemed to work well. Along with this came a roasted yellow beetroot salad and the most incredible warm pretzel bun. This was definitely my favorite part of the meal. Honestly, give me bread and I'm a happy girl, as you may have noticed already. This meal tasted really healthy and light, which was nice. During my meal, I'm greeted with the most incredible view out of my window. I did wonder where this was. But wow, I couldn't stop looking outside. Now, dessert time. I avoided the same mistake as last time in ordering a sweet dessert that I never end up finishing. I ordered the cheese platter. My flight attendant offered me a port to compliment my choice of cheese. I was hesitant as I had never tried port before, and I can safely say I probably never will again. Full few hours, which I believe was four or five. Just three hours left. I'm forcing myself to stay awake. I don't want to miss any more of this. I ordered my morning coffee, although I don't really know if it was morning or not, but. I ordered a coffee anyway, and instead of switching on another adventure documentary, I try the spin-off of the Sex and the City show. As someone who has literally watched every single episode on that entire series multiple times over, I was intrigued to see what the spin-off might be like. It's definitely not the same, but hey, I'll take it. Is anyone else a fan of this show? 
During my last few hours in business class, I refused to miss out on trying the breakfast this time around. I went for the salmon cream cheese bagel, which to my surprise was completely stone cold, but I feel like it was meant to be like that. The flavors all worked really well together, it was delicious, and again, tasted healthy. Complementing this was a fruit plate, jam, yogurt, and a bun. As we begin to approach London, I couldn't help but notice the countdown on my screen. I took these last few moments to appreciate this whole experience and just thought about how one day business class will become a mere distant memory. Or will it? Ha ha ha. Hint hint. P.S. How gorgeous is it flying over London? Wow. Leaving the plane, I was happy to see that my business experience wasn't quite over yet, as during the flight I noticed that we business class passengers were invited to use the arrivals lounge at Heathrow Airport. Of course, I went to go and check that out. They were serving lots of goodies, breakfast, tea, coffee, and showers. That's a really nice touch when hopping off a long flight. Oh yes, well hello there, it's uh, it's me, it's Chloe behind the voiceovers. Hope you've enjoyed my voice thus far. Now you can take a look at my face as well. I hope you've enjoyed my very first solo business class video because I sure did. United Polaris was something else and I am ruined forever. I am never going to want to go back to economy ever again, but unfortunately I don't have enough money to fly in business class all the time unless somehow we make it big on this YouTube thing and then I can just fly business class all the time. Let's, let's hope for that. Fingers crossed. I want to know, have you tried United Polaris business class yourself? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear about your experience. Was it similar to mine? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Are there business class options out there that are far better than what I experienced or less? good. Don't know where I was going with that, but tell me about your experience below. As promised, I'm going to have a brief chat about the perks of this flight, how I paid for it, how much it costs. I mentioned earlier I have only just begun to delve into the world of points and miles. Honestly, I've been traveling for well over 10 years and only just recently, about a couple of years ago, I invested in my first credit card and started to actually rack up points as I was flying. So silly, but I guess I just never looked into it. But that doesn't matter, I'm not wasting any time now and I'm racking up as many points as I possibly can with all of the new traveling that we're embarking on. I've been watching a whole bunch of these types of videos on YouTube, trying to figure out what the best way for me to earn miles and points to fly with all these perks, free flights, and upgrades. And unfortunately, coming from New Zealand, and according to the research that I've done, we don't seem to have those same credit card perks that you guys seem to have maybe over in the States. So two years ago, I invested in my very first credit card, the American Express Platinum Air Points card. Coming from New Zealand, most of the time when we would fly, it's either with Air New Zealand or a Star Alliance partner. So by using my American Express for everyday expenses, I started to rack up a lot of air points. Things like rent, groceries, petrol, anything that I could pay for using my credit card, I would do. Plus, if there was an opportunity to pay for a holiday that me and my family were going on, perhaps, I would always offer to pay for that holiday on my credit card and then everyone can just transfer me to my regular bank account in my own time. So that's how I personally made sure that I really ramped up my point earning potential. Now, at the time of booking this flight, I had around 2,000 air points saved up with Air New Zealand. What I really love about Air New Zealand air points is that one air point is equal to one New Zealand dollar. This made it nice and simple for a real newbie at this stuff, and it made it easy for me to understand. Whereas I've seen some airlines have really crazy point systems, and I can never quite understand what would give me what, what the value is. But one air point is one New Zealand dollar. I had around 2000 saved up, and as I mentioned earlier, the business class flight options that I found taking me from Auckland to Vancouver were around the same price as the business class flights 
from Auckland all the way to London, but with double the time on the plane and the opportunity to spend some time in transit and check out a lounge for my first time. This price was just over 4,000 New Zealand dollars. Now I could have waited and saved up enough air points to pay for this flight alone, but after the pandemic and me dreaming of business class for so long, I decided to just pay for half of my flight with air points, which is great that Air New Zealand allows you to do that. I could pay $2,000 with my air points and then the remaining balance I could just pay myself. So I got straight to work, worked long hours, had a special business class savings account and set my mind to saving up that extra $2,000 to pay for my flight altogether. Now I know it's not like these YouTube videos you see where I, I paid $90 for this first class seat. Unfortunately I haven't figured out quite how to do that good of a deal but I thought that was pretty great. $2,000 for a super long haul flight in business class with transit and to be honest that was roughly about the price of an economy seat one way to London anyway from Auckland so in my eyes it wasn't too bad. So unfortunately since I hadn't really been tracking my flights or making an effort with points most of my life the last couple of years have left me in basically no status with Star Alliance which is the alliance that Air New Zealand falls under along with a few other airlines which I might place on the screen right here. I assumed after my first business class flight I was going to head right up to silver status. Woo! Except, to my surprise, I skipped silver and went straight up to gold. This was very exciting. I have never had a status before, so that was very cool. Gold status. It looked like it was one less than the very top tier, the top tier of elite, so I felt extra special. And without knowing what the heck gold status even meant, except it sounded fancy, I had a quick little look on the website to see what it was. I saw a couple of different perks, such as I get these two recognition upgrades per year, which basically means I can jump up one or even two cabin classes when I book a future flight. I get to enter the priority lines again, which I was very excited about because that always feels so special and I feel really important. And this is cool because no matter which class I'm flying in, as long as I'm gold status with Star Alliance, I get to go through the priority line. Another nice thing is I get to add additional 23 kilo piece of luggage with me, no matter what class again that I fly on. I receive special frequent flyer seating for free. And another very exciting perk that I literally had no idea would happen is about to happen in one of my future videos, literally in a few videos time. So make sure you keep watching because that little surprise perk is gonna, it's gonna happen to me. I feel like I just said the word happen so much, but it's a very cool thing. And I'm not gonna tell you right now because I wanna lure you in to watch another video. So make sure you do. On that note, I would really appreciate it if you gave me a thumbs up for all of this effort, this took me a long time to edit this one with all of the voiceovers. So do give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below. Have you tried United Polaris or have you tried a business class flight? How was your experience compared to mine? And I'd love it if you subscribed. Please do. We'd love it if you joined this channel. It's not always just me by myself. Usually I have the Swedish man along with me for the ride. But today and for the next handful of videos, it's just going to be me. So I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.